There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. This is my bail wrap-up. I have never seen a bail wrap-up on Booktube and I don't know how this is going to go over. Perhaps like a lead balloon. But I have bailed on so many books this month, I didn't even count them. But it looks like about 8, 9 or 10. So I just didn't want to put all that into a normal wrap-up video. So I'm doing a separate video. I am the self-styled queen of bailing. I gave myself that title on Litzy. Uh, in 2016, I bailed on 30 books. And this year, so far, I've bailed on 92. To me, this is one of the uh, most delightful, freeing, wonderful things about my reading life is that at the slightest hint of boredom, or any kind of displeasure, I just bail. Bailing on books, or DNFing seems to be the more uh, common term on booktube, but it's the same thing, right? DNFing or bailing is a controversial topic among readers. I've almost had arguments with people about it. I have strong opinions about why I bail and why I think it's the, the best thing, and I thinking of doing a separate video, kind of a discussion video about that, but I won't get into those details. However, what I do caution you, not that I think you're snowflakes, well, maybe one or two, yeah. have a look at the books mentioned in the show notes, because if you're sensitive about hearing your favorite book trashed or talked about negatively, you might not want to watch this video. You might not want to watch a video where all I'm talking about is why I didn't finish 8, 9, or 10 books, and that's fine. But uh, I can be ruthless and snarky when I think a book is bad, but I also own it when it's just a matter of the wrong book at the wrong time or the wrong book for me. So I try to do that, but really, even the books I don't like... I could just say, oh, they're not for me, but I, I enjoy being a little snarky at times. So, let's get started. One of the books I bailed on in October was a Chinese novel, Soul Mountain by Gao Jingzhan, doorstopper of a novel that was very confusing and a loose, baggy monster of a book. I got a 20% into it before realizing that there's actually two male characters in alternating chapters. One is referred to by the pronoun you and the other is referred to by the pronoun I. Because I was reading it at a very leisurely pace, one chapter every two or three days or whatever, I, I hadn't noticed the pronoun change and thought that this was all the same character, but no it wasn't. So then I had to put a pause and go back and skim the whole book and get a try to distinguish the two characters. And then I read 3% more. I got to 23% and I thought, you know what? It's taken me three months to read not even a quarter of this book and there's set pieces in it that are kind of meditative and enjoyable, but there's not much of a story and life's too short. So I bailed. Another one that I bailed on was a nonfiction book called The Chivago Affair by Peter Finn. The subtitle is The Kremlin, The CIA, and The Battle Over a Forbidden Book. So this is one of those non-fiction books where all I was really interested in was a magazine article length treatment of the subject. So it had way too much detail. I was doing it on an audio. The summary of Pasternak's life was enjoyable or interesting. It was interesting to me. He wasn't such a likable, nice guy. But the... Once it started really getting into the Cold War battle, really what that was was a bunch of bureaucrats writing memos, and so it was boring, really boring. So I bailed. The other thing about it that I didn't like was the narrator, who Simon Vance, who narrates the second volume of the Hilary Mantel Cromwell trilogy. His voice just didn't suit this really dry material, because he... He's, he reads every sentence 
as if it has the import and weight of the pronouncements coming out of Henry VIII's mouth. And this is just really workmanlike dry prose, so it, uh, his narration grated on me. So for all those reasons, I bailed. Another one that I had high hopes for and started out pretty good and is a much-loved novel in Canada is a debut novel by an indigenous Canadian Cree writer. The novel is Birdie, and the writer is Tracy Lindbergh. And Tracy Lindbergh is a fascinating figure. I would be interested in learning more about her, but this novel didn't work for me. Even though, it's, so it's about a screwed up young Cree Canadian woman who has all kinds of issues with addiction and whatnot. And I, I did fall in love with that protagonist. She was so lovable. But the way the story was told, that there was the pacing, there wasn't much movement in the story. It was just kind of puddles of neurosis that didn't move the narrative forward, so I forget how far I got into it, but not very far, and I just said, no, it's not for me. Next one, again, I had high hopes for this, a zany collection of essays on Nigerian cuisine called Long Throat Memoirs, Soups, Sex, and Nigerian Taste Buds. I talked about this a couple times on Friday Reads, and I mean, the title just <laughs> is a scream, and uh, she is just one look at her, and I... I uh, want to party with her. But I bailed on this because it was just too detailed and she's lively writing and she's fun. I didn't even get to the sex part really, <laughs> but just too detailed and I didn't know what she was talking about. She's talking about Nigerian or African vegetables and spices and stuff and I just was getting lost in that because it sounded interesting but I didn't know what it was. You know, and I'm not really a foodie as I keep saying, despite the fact that some people out there disagree. So it was just too much. I might go back to it, but in the meantime, I'm going to uh, give this to a friend. The other, the next one, I actually have a paper copy, but I forgot to pull it out of the piles and piles of books. And I'm not going to take the time to do that now, because I've got things to do today. It was Chintu, a Ugandan novel. Quite new, out last year maybe, in English. Or in the, uh, in the West. I think she wrote she wrote it in English, I'm pretty sure. By Jennifer Nansubaga Makumbi. And this novel started out wonderfully back in the eighteenth century with the local governor or chief, whose name is Chintu, and the story of him and his many wives and family was fascinating. And what really hooked me at the beginning was all of the superstition about twins and two of his wives are twins and there was all this stuff about twins which was almost the complete opposite to the taboo against twins that I remember in Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart novel where when twins were born they would take them out into the forest and leave them to die because it was taboo and in this tribal culture it was the exact opposite they were revered or they had a special significance. So that was fascinating, absolutely. And the sexuality, some queer sexuality, and I was really enthralled with it. But there's a curse that gets put on Chintu, and then it carries down through the generations. And the closer it got to the modern day, the more I became disillusioned. And I found the way she threaded the curse through the story was a bit ham-handed and certainly not interesting to me. And so I forget how far I got into it, but for a fair ways, 30, 40 percent, and I no, bailed. Another book I had high hopes for, Wintering by Peter Guy. He's a Minnesotan writer, and this is a Minnesotan story. At first I was enjoying it, but it's about a father and son. This The father is has dementia, he's in his 80s, or he's an old man anyway, and he wanders off and disappears, and they assume he's dead, and so then the story is the son talking about his father to his father's longtime girlfriend, and that frame got a bit annoying after a while, 
and I thought the characterization was weak, and the backstory was a long trip that the father and son had taken 30 years before, in 1963, where they reenacted the ancient voyagers' journeys of discovery, and I thought that was really boring because they didn't really talk very much on this trip. This trip was a months long trip. I didn't even finish read it far enough to know what how that all turned out, but they not, both of them were kind of the strong silent types, so there was a lot of natural description about what they saw and you could see that there was some bad things happening, but they didn't talk very much and so it kind of reminded me of it, it was a turn off in a way very similar to how I am turned off by it. Robinson Crusoe stories in general. I just find them so boring. I want social interaction. So, I bailed. Other people would probably really enjoy it. It's gotten good reviews, except for me. In fact, I did a buddy read of this on Litzy, and I was the only one who didn't love it. So, different strokes for different folks. I talked in my October wrap-up about the fantasy novel by Charles DeLint that I absolutely hated. Well, before I found that short one, this is the other one I tried in October, and I think I, I read this when I was a teenager and loved it, but boy, did I ever hate it. Now, I'm just so allergic to wizards and magic and oh, so I didn't get very far into it. Less than 10% and I was just hating the story, so... Sorry, Ursula. This one I have a lot of kind of nostalgia and emotion around it. Carol Shields' final novel, Unless. She wrote it when she was dying. It was published before her death because I was confused about that when I talked about it before. But, duh, I have an autographed copy, so she obviously uh, was still alive when it was published. But I had never gotten around to reading it. I bailed on this. This is the third book of hers that I've... I didn't. I bailed on this one. The other two I read last year, or earlier this year, that I didn't enjoy. And Carol Shields had been one of my very most favorite writers in the 1990s. But my tastes have changed. Change, and I find her very middle class. That's not a term that I use in the pejorative very often, but it, it feels very pejorative in how I evaluate her writing now it just doesn't speak to me it's very safe and i just feel her or her protagonist her stories are so defended against the dark side of life and everything's all sunshine and whimsical and it doesn't speak to me at all anymore and i didn't get very far into it but the story is about a middle class academic freelance writer woman and her oldest daughter decides to live on the street for no apparent reason. And it would. So that's a heavy kind of dark story, and maybe things change, but I couldn't stand the, the atmosphere that Carol Shields was creating. It, it just rubs me the wrong way. So I feel very. What's the word? Grateful to Carol Shields. I, I, she gave me so much enjoyment when I was in my younger days, but she doesn't speak to me at all anymore. The next one is a little bit of a booktube darling. So here I go, upsetting the apple cart. Upsetting the apple cart. Elmet by Fiona Mosley. This was on the Booker shortlist, and this was my most benign, kindly bail because there was a lot about this book I love, but certainly not enough to finish. I read half of it, but the writing is just beautiful. I will try it, her next book. But this is not really a novel, or it, it's just a series of mostly set pieces that probably if you put what little narrative there is together, it could have... and took out a lot of the natural description which went on for pages and pages it could have been a pretty good short story but it was bloated with some gorgeous but 17 page descriptions of how the grass was blowing beside the house or whatever that just sapped it of any narrative energy whatsoever so I bailed but 
I feel very positive towards Fiona Mosley. I understand from kind of scanning stuff, you know, Twitter and whatnot, that she wrote this on her iPhone, on her coffee breaks from work or something, or she's a PhD student in medieval studies. But anyway, she wrote this on her smartphone, and uh, she had a baby the day the shortlist was announced or something. So I'm interested in her, and she can write beautifully, so I'll be curious to see where she goes, but this was not successful for me. I had to read for a reading challenge a, a book, fiction or nonfiction, about a spiritual journey by a person who is not white. And I've bailed on so many books because I'm not a very spiritual person. <laughs> and spiritual writing makes me want to puke. But finally it kind of occurred to me, hey, Maya Angelou, I've never read Maya Angelou, and you know, I liked what I've heard of her, you know, and when she's on Oprah or whatever, I've, wherever I've seen her. Or heard her interviewed so i tried on audio i know why the caged bird sings which was her debut i believe it's a memoir of her childhood and and i did it on audio having maya angelou in your ear reading to you that was absolutely wonderful so because of the marvelous her marvelous voice and beautiful writing it took me a probably longer than usual to realize that this was a really boring book. Nothing interesting happened in it. So I think I read half, I listened to half of it and bailed, but I still feel very, I still love Maya Angelou, but this book was not for me. I might try another of hers. I don't, I also don't do well with childhood stories or memoirs in general. And the last one was one I tried on audio for the uh, I had to read a horror book for one of my reading challenges, and I tried Bird Box by Josh Mallerman, and it's it held my interest for a long time. But as with all genre fiction of any type imaginable, the more I feel the conventions of the genre asserting themselves, the more my gorge rises, and I just get sick. So that's exactly what happened. It it was a spook not spooky but creepy it was a creepy uh, story so i don't want to spend time going into it but if you like horror or creepy stories i think you would like it but i just can't stand genre stuff and uh, i got bored and quit maybe halfway through so those are my bales which say in most cases i don't think i was snarky about one of them i think i think pretty much every one they say more about me than about the book and uh, many of them might be for you so uh, if you had a different opinion of these any of these please let me know or if you agreed with me please let me know and that's all i have to say about this month's bales also if you have any comments about bailing obviously if you think that I'm a jerk for bailing on so many books, I don't really want to hear those kind of comments. But if you have any thoughts on bailing, I'd be interested to hear those in the comments below. And I am probably going to make a discussion video about the topic at some point. Anyway, have a lovely weekend. Thanks for listening.